Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to make a duct tape dummy. Now, I originally wanted to show it actually on me, but I couldn't find any assistant that was willing to wrap me up in duct tape and uh, post it on the internet for obvious reasons. So instead, I'm going to duct tape my dress form here. You can also use this method to give yourself a very accurate corset pattern without actually having to go to paper to draft it yourself. I need to make this dress form anatomically accurate so it will match my measurements, so I'm using balled up socks to stuff the bust. I wrapped each ball of socks in a plastic bag to protect it and to give the tape something to hold onto. Then I positioned each one and kept it in place with painter's tape. I decided to use painter's tape instead of duct tape for this step so that it will be easy to peel off my dress form at the end and it won't leave a residue. Next, I took a large plastic bag and fit it over the dress form, making a hole around the neck. Once again, this is to protect the dress form from the stickiness of the duct tape. When you're taping an actual person, you may want to use an old shirt instead of a plastic bag, but the purpose is the same. You want to prevent the duct tape from sticking to your model's skin. Once you have your bags or long shirt in place, start taping. I started by putting a few vertical strips to prevent the tape form from collapsing on itself, since I'm not going to be adding boning to this form. This is a great tip that I got from Wasted.com. It's not necessary for you to do this step, but I found that it helped me. Next, you can see here I'm wrapping the form around and around, going from the bottom up to the rib cage, right under the bust. When you're taping a real person, it might be easier for the taper to hold still with the roll of tape and feed it out while the tapee spins around on the spot, instead of the taper running circles around his model. When I got to the bust, I started shaping the tape vertically around the bust since I want a full, non-squished shape to it. In the back, I kept the horizontal pattern going right up to the nape of the neck, in case I ever want to create a vest with this pattern. Next, I'm reinforcing the bust and shaping the tape around the armholes or arm side. To keep the bust full and defined, I'm using the good old cross my heart technique. Place the tape above one breast, cross down and below the other breast. This lifts and separates the bust, just like the retro Playtex bra commercials claim. Keep filling in the gaps and reinforcing the form. The more layers of tape you add, the stronger the form will be and the better it will keep its shape. A 45 yard roll of duct tape should be enough to give a small to medium person two layers. Next, since I'm using this duct tape form as a corset pattern, I'm using the green painter's tape as a contrasting line to form what shape I want the top and bottom of my corset. You can use a permanent marker if you want, I'm just using the green tape so I can adjust the lines if I need to. Unless you are very asymmetric, you can actually get two different corset patterns out of this one dress form, since you only need one half of it to create a pattern. So I'm going to show you two different shapes here. On one side, I want a pointed bust with a plunge center and a low back. For my other pattern, I want a more sweetheart shaped bust with a higher back. 
For the bottom of my pointed bust corset pattern, I want it to be long line, so I mark the hips quite low. For the bottom of my sweetheart corset pattern, I want it to cut up high on the hip, so I mark it that way with the tape. Don't forget to mark the waistline. I'm using quite thick tape here, but you may want to use a much thinner tape or even mark it out with a black permanent marker. The next thing I'm doing is marking the center front and center back of the form. This will be the marking for the front busk and the back laces. Be very careful in this step and make sure your lines are indeed vertical. Use a plumb bob or a level if you have to. Lastly, cut the form off your model. If you're making a general dress form, just cut it along the back vertical line. If you intend to make two different corsets from each side, feel free to separate them by cutting the front and the back lines. And there you go. So if you want to make this into a dress form, all you have to do is close up the back and then stuff this with something like pillow stuffing and then close up the top and the bottom to make it sort of a solid structure. And if you want to, you can put it on a stand like this. Now, if you just want to completely bypass the dress form and turn this into your very own customized corset pattern, all you have to do is cut this down the middle and you can use each separate side, like I said before, for uh, a different type of pattern because usually a pattern is only consisting of one half of the body unless you're very as as asymmetric. And then start making your separate panels, cutting vertically along here, trying to make each panel as flat as possible so that you'd be able to easily transfer it over to fabric. So I hope this was helpful to you. If, if you have any questions, please let me know. And if you would actually like me to demonstrate how to turn this into your very own customized corset pattern, also feel free to comment and let me know. So I will talk to you guys later.